rent. Those of us that are paying rent, we need to understand something. We get rent increases all the time and rent's growing up, going up, going up. There's a reason why corporate landlords, there's a reason why corporate landlords in the last five years bought over 200,000 homes. You know why they bought over 200,000 homes? Because they understand the power of rent, the power of raising rent. They understand the power of equity. That's why when you see all these high rises going up and you driving by and you're looking at all these buildings, they don't say for sale on the side of it. They say for lease, for lease, for lease. They want to create a nation of renters. This is why. And a lot of them are not doing this just so they can be landlords to you. No. Do we think corporations want to rent to regular people with jobs and now they got to go to court when you're not paying rent? No. They understand that people with programs are going to be the biggest asset for real estate in the future. You have millions of people coming to this country, millions of people who are going to need housing, millions of people they're going to create programs for. When a government says we need housing, we need landlords to come forward with homes so we can house these migrants, to house all these people who have just lost their job. Three million jobs will be gone in 2030 due to automation. Do the math. I'm not making this stuff up. Google these things and look at AI. I want you to think about Amazon laying off people. I want you to think about the automated cars laying off the truck driver, Uber drivers being gone. Waymo has Google. Google has a company called Waymo, which is doing autonomous driver pick up like Uber right now. It's called Waymo. They're using it in Arizona, San Francisco, and I think Texas is the other place. Driverless cars. What's going to happen with all these drivers? What's going to happen with all those trucks? I want you to think about Publix cashiers. I want you to think about Trader Joe's. I want you to think about uh, all, all these stores. I want you to think about all of them when automation comes into play. Every time you go into a store, Target's, any one of them, I want you to think about how many people are on the register, how many people, how much automation is taking place, and where are these people jobs? I want you to remember back when there was a time you used to drive through the toll and give people money. Where are they? I just want you to think. Where are they? Nobody's paying attention to that. This is what's going to happen with all of these stores and all of these jobs where 3 million jobs are going to be at risk. Now, 3 million people out of jobs, 3 million people who don't, don't have income. Now what's going to happen? There's going to be a program for them to get on. Now this program is going to do what? This program is going to have to pay their rent. Now this program is not going to give you the money. It's going to house them and put them in. And just like Section 8, but it'd be something else. They're going to go to BlackRock, Vanguard, and say, you got 200,000 homes. So guess what? Let's get together, and now we're going to pay you rent, guaranteed money to house these people. That's why they're doing this. That's why. Why everybody needs to own real estate. And I'm not talking about being a real estate investor. I'm not talking about just trying to build this portfolio because buying real estate is not the cornerstone of wealth anymore. Buying real estate isn't the tool where you can buy a property for 300000 and then it goes up to $1.7 it's not happening no more. You can buy a property, you can gain some equity, but real estate will now be the tool for when you lose your job, it will supplement your income. That's what real estate can do. Real estate will be the tool for you to make money so you can invest in the future of technology, so you can invest where the change in the world is going, so you can invest in where things are looking. If you think your kids and your grandkids are ever gonna touch paper money, and if you believe they would never touch money again, and you think, Digital currency has taken over. How come we're not investing in digital currency? How come the banks just invest billions and trillions of dollars to convert their systems over to now take digital money, but we're not investing in it? How come it's so quiet? What do you think is happening with banks? Who still goes to a bank and give them a check through a teller window? Who still goes to a bank to go say, give me a money order? Who still goes to a bank? Banks are shutting down. Commercial real estate is shutting down. Commercial real estate is going to be one of the main reasons banks, commercial banks and their, their facilities will possibly collapse. But what we're doing, we're getting comfortable. We're sitting on the side, watching all of this take place, 
kind of figuring it out, but we're not doing anything. I need you to start realizing real estate will be the cash flow to build wealth in these other sectors, but real estate will not be the tool where you can just buy four or five houses, sit back and wait 20 years and say, I'm a millionaire. That train has left the station, but real estate can give you housing so you don't be homeless. Real estate can give you housing to create cash flow. So when your job is at jeopardy, you lose your job, you got cash flow. Real estate will be the supplement so you can take that thing and become savvy investors. I want to create smart investors who think 10 to 15 years into the future. I don't want to talk to people who are in denial saying, no, it ain't. Oh, I don't never see that happen. Or I would never use it. It's not for you. Everything that they're creating now is used on us as a template for a testing ground for our children and our grandchildren. That's all it is. We're the test dummies. That's what we are. We already know what clothes we like to wear. We already know what type of music we like to listen to. We know what shows we like to watch, but they are still figuring out. That's who it's for. You need to start investing in what they talk about, what they're doing. Not saying, I'm never going to get in a car that don't have a driver. God bless you, don't. But invest in that. There was a post I put up where if you would have bought, if you would have just kept your first two iPhones and never bought another iPhone, but took the money that the next iPhone costs and invested that into the S&P, just kept your free phone, you would have over $2 million right now. If you would have not bought every version of the iPhone and took that money and just invested in the stock market and just left it. You're buying new phones just to take better pictures. All right, let me, let me go now. Let, let me go. I got a lot of stuff. Forgive me if I ramble on. You're going to do this to avoid being homeless. Now I need y'all to understand something. These are charts I pulled up. This is the national average of the rents increase over the last five years. Rent increases started out at 4%. COVID came around and dropped down to 2%. Rent increase. COVID ends and went back to 4%. So you think it would level out. It's going to stay at 4% rent increase. Nope. Rent increases went all the way up to 12% rent increase. Now it came down to 10% rent increase. And it's leveling off at that level. Who could withstand getting a rent increase of 10%? every single year when the average bump in income is two to 3% every year. Who can withstand it? You're being outpaced. Now this is something I want to show you as a landlord, the average ratio of rent to salary is 30% is what we normally went by. 30% of your salary need to cover your rent. Now I need you to watch this chart and look at the orange bars. The orange bars is the monthly salary to cover the rent. Now I'm going to show you what it is now. The average salary to cover the rent now. Watch that orange bar. The average salary is 50% covering your rent. Your, sal your monthly salary, 50% is going to people's rent. Let me go back so you can see that. That's what it used to be. This is what it is now. How can we withstand? How can you survive? How? By listening and bring creating structures. Now this is 2024. I'm going to show y'all some more information. I don't want y'all to think I'm just going off. Like these are stats I've searched, pull them up because I need to give it context. Context is what you need. This is 2024, 50% of the average salary. By 2030, which is only six years away, it will be at over 60% of your salary covering your rent. You need real estate. You need to protect yourself from this. You need to be able to prevent you, your children, your grandkids from becoming homeless by owning something. This is inevitable. What are the solutions? I talked about the problems, you know, I, I gave you guys a little things to be worried about. Yeah, but you know what? We need this. We need to hear the truth because hearing, being coddled is, is done now. It's time for real conversations to happen. Solutions. Group investment structures, period. Creating a family portfolio. What I mean by that, you, 
your wife, your husband, your children, if we stop sending our kids out the door to rush them out the house to go get five roommates using their salary and keep them in the house, we can take that salary that they have, combine it with our salary, and now buy a piece of real estate for them to move into. Other cultures do it all the time. I'm going to leave that there for a second. Other cultures do it all the time. Help them get some real estate. Start building a credit. Put them, if you have great credit, make them, make them a, give them a credit card. Make them an authorized user of your credit card, but don't give them the physical credit card. Just make them an authorized user. Even if your children are 10 years old, make them an authorized user on your credit card now. So when they become age, they're going to inherit your credit score. Then when they get old enough to start getting loans and get credit, they got a good credit score. Y'all can stop buying a piece of real estate with your children. You can buy them a house. You could get a program and put them on a program to get them a piece of real estate. That's what you can do and not just be so fast and us kick them out. I understand some kids we got to kick out the house now. I understand some of them we got to let go and leave them in the Lord's hand, as we say. But a lot of this we can fix. Family portfolios. LLC ownership, portfolio growth is another reason why you use group economics instead of creating, instead of buying one piece of real estate with yourself, now you can buy five, six, seven piece of real estate properties if you create the family structure, the group investment structure. That's the power. The, now, and, and I'm going to tell y'all something. You've been hearing about people who invest and got caught up in these scams where they lost money investing in, 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 in group real estate deals. And that ha those were not real estate group investment deals. I'm going to tell you, those were people who gave somebody money and told them, go invest for me. That's what that was. But under the umbrella, oh, no, we're going to use group economics. It's not group economics if I give you money and I trust you to go buy for me. No, group economics is paperwork. My name is on it. My company name is on it. We have documents with attorneys that signed, that's group economics. That's the structure, not giving somebody money. And I don't need to talk about the two big deals that we know that happened where people lost a lot of money, but those were people who gave somebody money. And now you can buy bigger, bigger real estate properties. Once you start, you take your money, you can buy singles, doubles, four units, which is great. But now seven to eight of you get together. Now you can buy eight unit, 10 unit, 12 unit. Those are the things we can do. Those are the things. This right here is an actual investment. This is not an imaginary. And I hope I got some people from my community in here because I'm going to bring some of you guys on to talk about this. We have people in my community. We partnered on this property. That's the address right there if you want to look it up. We paid $2.5 million for this property last year. 15 people got in. We raised half a million dollars and bought this property. This property is a 12-unit all the unit is government programs. It's in Long Beach, California. We don't have to depend on nobody paying us rent. This is all government programs. Money on time, paid. Why do we like government programs? I'm going to give you three reasons. Because the rent's never late. I'm going to give you another reason why we like government programs. Because the rent's never late. And the most important reason I like government programs, because the rent's never late. That's the main reason. So this is one of our investments inside my community in a group. We also, they also invest in other projects where five or six of them get together, seven or eight of them get together, and they're all buying real estate. Like I said, I, I know a few of them are here and I'm going to bring them up and we're going to talk at the end because I want y'all to understand what a community looks like, what a real group get together and start investing and believing in each other looks like. All right. So with that property now bought last year. You can look this property up. This property now is worth almost $2.8 million. So within a little over a year, that property has gained over almost $200,000 worth of equity and buying that as a group. So now this is how the group investment structure work. I'm going to give you all of the keys to how this works. I'm not here to pull some, oh, I'm going to give you a little bit. I'm giving you everything. So stick around. Let's imagine we have this group here, this group of investments. Now we got Kenyon. Kenyon is, Kenyon is the one in the shadow in the middle. You got to have, I see you, Kenyon. We're going to have one person who has the LLC to acquire because Kenyon got good credit. Kenyon can get us the best rate to get this loan for the best rate. 
But we're not just going to give Kenyon money and have Kenyon buy it. No, Kenyon's family, he's part of the crew. But guess what? Trust goes so far, but validation even goes better. We want the paperwork right. So now what we do, we set up an investor's agreement with Kenyon and the LLC. We also set up the operating agreement with the structure that we are all investing in this thing right here. Kenyon, I trust you, baby boy, but we're doing paperwork. All right. So now we all invested this property. Now, at the same time, we're going to open up another partnership holding LLC that all of our own LLCs own this property. All of us, <laughs> all of us, there they getting on you, Kenyon. So now all of us own a property LLC together. So now we purchased this property. Here's the apartment building we bought. The address is 123 Main Street property we just bought. We're going to create another LLC, and it's going to be 123 Main Street LLC. The reason why we keep the LLC in the name of the property so we don't get confused and try to figure out what the name is. Once we create another LLC in that property, we are going to do a warranty deed transfer to our partnership holding LLC at the bottom. What did that just do? That gave us all ownership of the property in the deed. Once that happens, we're all going to own this in our holding LLC. The reason why I like to use the name holding, acquisition, and property management you're here about, because that's the purpose. The acquisition LLC buys the property. The holding LLC will hold the property. It will be separate from the acquisition. The acquisition will manage the mortgage so you can continuously get lines of credit on your acquisition and you don't hold the asset in the same LLC as the loan. It's separate. The now, you see, uh, I'm, I'm going to go to this next one. See, I only, I'm pausing because I don't know should I give you this information yet, but I am. I'm going to give it to you. The holding LLC, all of us are on the left. Each one of us will not be using our name to hold the LLC for that one that owns the property to holding. Everybody on this call needs to have an LLC. You know why? Because you're going to be writing off this call writing off you joining the community, writing off your electric bill, your cell phone bill. You need to, even if you don't know what your LLC is going to do, your LLC, the best time to have an LLC is when you're not making money so you can use it as a write-off. Not when you stop making money. <laughs> Think about it. Amazon been losing money for over 10 years. Then they became profitable. But guess what they were doing? Writing off all those losses. See, we sit around and we wait. Oh, no, I'm just going to do... No, 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 my people. But now let me go to the next slide. I don't... This right here is an investor's agreement. This is what my community uses. My lawyer, we have an in-house attorney, a corporate attorney who does all our agreements. Those of you who join the community, this attorney will be your attorney. He does all our paperwork, all our agreements. He did our operating agreements. This is the stuff we use. You guys will have access to this. You will have access to the documents. You will have access to the lawyers. You will have access to everything I'm about to show you right here. 